of the Old Bridge Planning Board for May 1st, 2018. Would everybody please stand and salute the flag? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. Mr. Here. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. Running. Here. Mr. Murching. Here. Mr. Payton. Here. Mr. Lucas. Here. Mr. Kira McCannon. Here. Ms. Carey. Present. Ms. Shapira. Here. Mr. Dorothy. Present. Mr. Ramsa. Here. Ms. Drum. Here. Mr. Hart. Here. Okay, I was remiss last month because I didn't welcome our new member to the planning board, Catherine DeLuca. And um, I just want to say we're really happy to have you aboard. And it just shows if you come to planning board meetings, you can get hooked, and then you can be <laughs> you end up here instead of down there. So um, anyway, we're happy to have you. OK, for the minutes, April 10th, 2018, do we have a motion? I'll move it. Move by Mr. Schmidt. Second? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Rucci. Roll call, please. Mr. Cascade? Yes. Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lennon? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Payne? Yes. Mr. Luca? Yes. Chairman Hannon? Yes. Okay, first we have a presentation, Control Farms Park Concept Plan presentation by Nicole. Thank you, Chairwoman Cannon, um, planning board members. Um, you may recall last year, last summer, I was here and we were talking about the registered open space inventory. I think one of the questions that came up when we were talking about um, the Rossi list um, for Green Acres was what's going on across the street with Cottrell Farms? Um, and I had said, well, hold off. Uh, Katie O'Kane, the former township planner, and myself were coming up with some concept for um, the park across the street. Um, we were doing it mainly so we could start a conversation with Middlesex County on grant funding and also any other type of contribution um, that they may see coming down their pipeline as far as funding. Um, we were looking to see if you know a park would be suitable for the area. Um, we were also thinking that it would be a nice focal point in our town center district to come up with something that um, all users, all users, all residents within our town could come and enjoy. Um, we took some, you know, conceptual plans that we had developed um, individually um, within the private sector um, of our previous positions, um, and then also just some knowledge of features that are coming up in parks that are just a little bit more um, current than what we've seen in the past. Um, when we were thinking about it, Um, we had discussions about, you know, placing, you know, a, a large parking lot sort of at the corner of uh, Cottrell and County Route 516. Um, there was a um, investigation that was done on the soils there, and because um, it was in apple orchards, um, there were high level of historic pesticides at that corner. Um, one of the ways that you could sort of mitigate that is by capping it, and one way to cap it is to, to place pavement on it. Um, so we thought that that would be an ideal location for a parking lot, um, sort of to service basically a proposed park. Um, we thought about different features like um, a walking path um, with a parkour. So you could have walkers, you could have people doing um, fitness activities on, in the parkour. We thought about um, a water fountain feature, something akin to a splash pad, but nothing too attractive that you would start now sort of attracting um, residents from like all over the state to come to. Something that would sort of um, be great for the kids, but you know, add as a, as a water feature for the uh, park. Uh, a community garden, a gazebo, a picnic grove, um, a playground, 
Um, we also thought about refurbishing the existing buildings that are out there um, that are in dire need of refurbishing, um, also to use them for, for future venues. If somebody wanted to rent out any of the buildings, they would be available. Um, we were thinking about a butterfly garden, because especially because of low maintenance feature. Um, also an amphitheater. Some of these ideas also came from um, Tom Badcock, who was our former director of Parks and Recreation. Um, these ideas also came about, you know, before we found his replacement. So in, in coming up with some of the ideas, we were looking to put an RFP out so we can get um, a professional engineer and also an architect, the, the engineer for the site work and an architect for the building work. Um, we wanted to think about what people would use the park for, you know, venues, um, passive recreation, um, passive and active recreation, um, picnics, um, concerts. Um, the township has Old Bridge Day in, in this um, parking lot. Well, perhaps maybe we could use the parking lot across the street for overflow. Maybe the event actually happens across the street and the parking actually happens on this property. So there's a lot of different ideas that we had tossed um, around. What we thought about also was, um, you know, the existing features of the site. You know, you could notice that in the, in the lower um, area that's fronting 516 is where the existing buildings are. Um, along Cottrell Road, you could see that that field up until probably about a, a summer or two summers ago was still being farmed. Um, that's where the historical pesticides are at the highest level. That's where we were thinking about where the parking lot would be. Um, it would be ideal in that location because then we could try, tie in the drainage system or the stormwater management system into the existing system along County Route 516. The area that's located to the east or to the right side of this photo, um, you'll see that there's almost a, a rectangular open area in the center of all the apple orchards. We were thinking, huh, that would be a great idea for sort of like a great lawn or maybe a gazebo area. This is just another view of, um, of, of the site um, from Cottrell looking towards the east. These are the existing buildings. These photos actually came from um, a preliminary assessment that was done um, through the county on the conditions of the building. An architect had done that preliminary assessment and only recommended improvements on the exterior, but not improvements on the interior. Um, it, it is, in a sense, a historic home. Um, when I was in the basement, I saw that the foundation had 1840 etched in it. Some pieces of it is newer. So some of the basement was expanded. Um, some of the um, house has some additions on it. It's not on the historic list. Um, at first, I said, oh, well, maybe we could open ourselves up to more grant funding if we do put it on that historic list. But with that also comes a whole list of additional um, sort of restrictions on how you can improve it, and that increases the dollar amount. So I said, for now, let's hold off on that. Um, let's see what we can do to update it for use. Um, the, on the upper left-hand side, you'll see that it says garage storage building. In the recommendations in that assessment report, that building was to come down. It was just fun functionally obsolete. It had no value, no historic, um, historic value either. Um, that's a corn crib. I, I actually never knew what one was, um, which is off to, to one of the garages. Um, there are some remnants of a greenhouse that used to exist. Um, there's a beautiful red barn and then some old, you know, um, garages, you know, some with some beautiful stonework in front of it. Um, and when you go inside, it's, it's actually, especially that red, the red brownish barn, beautiful on the inside, beautiful um, um, workmanship on the inside. Actually, also in the house, extremely well maintained. It's been empty for quite a bit of time and the inside was absolutely immaculate. So when we were thinking about the walking trails, I kind of wanted to just put some snapshots of just sort of the features. Um, ultimately, the, the material selection um, for any walking trail will be determined during final design, um, even as, well, I should say preliminary design so we can come up with what the cost is to see if, if we can actually afford the improvements. Um, the fitness park course is you know, something that would look like what's on the screen. Um, we would think about materials that are lower in maintenance cost, um, just something easily maintained and, and some, some sort of identifier for each of 
um, the fitness um, course elements. This is um, just some samples that we picked up um, for community gardens. Um, we would locate this close to the parking lot so that um, we can ensure that people that are going to do the work there don't have to trek the entire length of the park to get to it. These are just um, some ideas for picnic groves or gazebos um, for like that center green. This is um, the butterfly gardens in, in some of the parks that um, I know Ms. Kane had previously worked in. This is, this is what I was talking about, a splash pad or the water feature. You know, typically on the lower right hand corner of the screen, you see a splash pad, which is pretty colorful and, and very attractive to a lot of people. You know, we were thinking of so, something like a water feature, sort of like the fountains, where they actually um, sort of have a rhythm to them when they go on. Um, and, the, and the kids would enjoy it, but not something that would be so attractive to basically every resident in the state, something that the township residents can enjoy um, locally. This is what we were thinking about for the amphitheater. And now um, we were thinking about to keep costs low, a prefab um, amphitheater structure. And this is what we were talking about with the venues. Um, on the top left hand, there's a, there's a barn there. And, and when I look at that photo in the interior of the barn that we have, although it looks pretty small on the outside, it's pretty, it's pretty large. That's sort of almost the same sort of opening, open space that our barn has. Um, so something that we could rent out for, you know, weddings, graduations, communions, bar mitzvahs, you know, something that could be a source of revenue for the town to sort of keep the maintenance up within the park. Just some other features like lighting, you know, additional picnic tables, park furniture, everything that sort of would be required. This is actually the conceptual plan um, that Miss O'Kane and myself had laid out, um, where the parking lot was closer to Cottrell. Um, the block that you see in it right, right to the right of the parking lot would be the community gardens. The building is located, you know, exactly where they are now, and we would have a drive located off of County Route 516 and then another entrance and exit off of uh, Cottrell Road. That large area in the center is what we're calling the green. Um, all the apple orchards would stay um, because that's a beautiful feature. People can actually pick the apples, you know, eat them, enjoy them in the picnic area. The water feature is located on that north side of the green. Um, we had called a whole slew of um, ideas for that lower portion, um, playground, the butterfly garden, um, you know, uh, um, basically anything. And we were sort of leaving it open because, bless you, if we, if we, um, if there's funding available through a source and the, the funding is available for a playground, then it would be a playground. Or if the funding is available for something else, we would sort of gear that area towards that something else. Um, the whole idea of me coming to you now is because I had put out an RFP for engineering and architectural services, two separate ones. Um, in there I say that the consultants that are selected for the engineering and architectural should be aware that there's gonna be a steering committee um, that would be developed um, at the onset of the project. These are only conceptual in nature and they could certainly change, some of the elements can certainly change. The idea is to make it um, a park that would be great for all users. I know we have a lot of parks in town where we have baseball and softball fields and soccer fields. And this is sort of, you know, giving, you know, kids um, somewhere to, you know, just play and, and, and not be worried about a sport. Um, for um, our adults to then en enjoy, you know, the community gardens and the amphitheater um, and the park course. So it, it was really trying to, to think of all our age groups and trying to think in, about um, sort of a, a revenue source as well um, for um, the venue sort of aspect of it. Um, so what I'm asking the planning board to think about, and certainly you don't have to make that decision tonight, we have probably about um, another four to six weeks before you know a steering committee should be formed. But I was thinking about two volunteers from our planning um, board to sort of, you know, report back to the planning board and how things are going with the conceptual plan, how we progress to preliminary and final design. Um, and then I'll be asking the same from council. Um, the steering committee would consist of um, the mayor, um, so administration, planning board members, council members, engineering, 
um, our planner um, when, we, when we have somebody on board, um, our consultants, um, somebody from our Department of Public Works, the director, director of um, Parks and Recreation. So it's going to be a, a large group, um, and we're all going to be full of ideas. Um, but just know that the RFP that went out for engineering services did have these elements in them. Um, so there might be, you know, some ideas on placement or some additional ideas that might come out of, of that steering committee. So, so this is the conceptual plan. Um, I just wanted to bring it to your attention because I know that I had a presentation um, back to council in the fall, and I realize I've never even come to the planning board, although I did promise it last summer. So um, if anybody has any questions. What, what's the, how much, many acres? Do we, are we talking about? I believe it's 32. 32. Two. Okay. Yeah. And the on. parking, would the parking all be in that one area or would you have other small parking pockets throughout the? Well, you know, when, I, when I had met with the consultants, they had said, you know, um, the, some of the parking should be moved more interior. My problem is, is you know, if I move it more interior, then I have to bring the infrastructure to pull the, the stormwater out from that area and then closer to 516 or Cottrell where there is a stormwater system. So it would just be more costly to add a smaller one on the inside. Um, but certainly it's something that we could look at, yep. Okay, does anybody else have any questions? Question. Yes, Mr. Lauer. Nicole, um, if, if the historical label was put onto the uh, uh, Cottrell Farm House, is there a possibility that there would be, I know you said it would be com more complicated, is there a possibility that there could be federal money uh, linked with that uh, label or some it, kind of grant? There's always a potential, I don't think from, from when Ms. O'Kane had researched it, I don't think it was even eligible at that point because there was too many newer elements of the house, you know, so it, I don't believe it was eligible. Um, we had, when we requested the architect, we had actually requested that they be certified um, in, you know, historic properties. Um, the first rounds of RFPs for that architectural work came in very, very high. So I removed that restriction. The architects that we had selected still has the experience in historic properties. They just don't have that certification. Um, to see if I could bring the, the consultant fees down so we could even think about rehabbing because they were basically taking all of my rehab money on the building <laughs> and wanting me to spend it on the consultant fees. If that's my first blush at what it would be like, um, I would say I think it's better to keep it non on the historic. It will always be maintained sort of as close as possible to its original because it's in our name. Um, and, and I know that there's been talk about um, Middlesex County owning the property, but we have 40% ownership in it, and Middlesex County has 60. So we will always have a say. I know that at one point, way back when, when we first looked at acquiring Cottrell, um, <clears throat> that I know Tom Badcock had talked about possibly having a restaurant in that house, you know, of, or renting it out for, but even having, um, you know, consigning it out to someone who would run a restaurant. So, I, you know, I would hope that obviously it would be kept, you know, in pristine shape and, and have a use for it. It is actually, I was shocked when I went inside. It was beautiful. The, the workmanship, especially on the older portion, pristine. I mean, you know, some of the fireplaces have been closed off for, for no future use, um, but some of it is just the detail and like the workmanship and, and the flooring and it, it's actually very beautiful. Yeah. You know? And that whole, all with the buildings and so forth and that whole area, you know, we envision it that being like an historical, you know, that you could give tours and do, well, I guess with the Township Historical Society, have them be involved and, yeah. and you know, make it a destination for school kids and, you know, yeah. 
I think I think one of it one of the um, slides we said Boy Scout, Girl Scouts, any anything like that, you know, where you can m sort of you know bring people and, and see the history there. I was I was shocked when it said 80, 1840 in the basement. You know, I, I, it's, yeah, it's, it's a really it's a it's our piece wonderful. of history. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Yes, Casey. I just want to say I had the opportunity to walk the property recently, and uh, with actually with Nicole, when you walk into the house, you know. You're looking at the outside, you're going to think this is an old, decrepit house. The kitchen is like from the 2000s. It, you know, it's really updated. And then, as Nicole said, you walk into the older portions of the house. It has the original trim. The skeleton keys are still in the doors. You know, it's really something special. Yeah. You don't see that anymore. So I think it's a great first step that we're taking to preserve it and utilize it. So I just want to say thank you. Right. Anybody else? I have some I questions. Yes. Um, is there any concern about, I know you had mentioned in the area, the proposed area for the parking lot, um, that being an ideal site because of historic pesticide contamination, is that a concern elsewhere on the property or is it just? No, I mean, they, they did testing throughout the property. Um, it's, everything is good. And I was also wondering too, around where the buildings are, um, the potential for electrical hookup, if you are looking at it for a venue source, would electric be made available? Would generators be needed i was just curious no about no there's a, there's electric in the in the barn in the garages there's all electric already there i mean it would have to be brought up to code um and then you know anything within the the buildings themselves like there, there's bathrooms in the house themselves but they would have to be bring brought up to um public use basically so right now if you go behind the kitchen there's you know, a, a bathroom with a bidet and a shower, it would be, it would just turn into two separate bathrooms, one for men, one for women, or just two separate bathrooms. The shower would come out and it would be basically remodeled for, for public use. Okay. Okay, anybody else? Well, thank you. It sounds really exciting. It's after all these years. <laughs> so Chairwoman Cannon, if somebody could email me and let me know who the two candidates would be from the planning board. Okay. I'd appreciate it. And it's, you're saying about four to six weeks before you have somebody on board? Um, the, the three engineers that had submitted on the site work, um, I'm ready to award. I, I, basically, I would award on Monday, but I'm going to be on vacation. Most likely, I would want to wait until the, architecture, the architect is sort of in place, too, so that I could have them both awarded at the same night. Um, so I don't think I will be ready until the June meeting to award. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have uh, completeness waivers, 08-18P, um, 1225 Route 9 Realty, LLC, JAB Automotive. Good evening. Uh, Peter Clouser with the firm. AB. Um, we are here for a completeness waiver uh, hearing um, uh, for, for two. Uh, you want to maybe sit and use that? There's something wrong with that. <clears throat> Let's see if that's any better. Okay, sorry for breaking your microphone. Uh, there's uh, <laughs> two waivers that the applicant is requesting for submission purposes only, uh, the environmental impact statement, the community impact statement. We've had the opportunity to review Nicole's April uh, report. Um, and I, you know, I would agree with her conclusions that this is an existing use at the site um, and therefore, and, and there is no sensitive areas. It's a fully developed piece of property. We're seeking to expand the parking lot. So we would just ask um, for submission purposes if those could be granted. I certainly understand that if during the course of your deliberations or Nicole's review, she feels that any of that additional information is necessary, we understand we have an obligation to um, provide it. Um, so I, 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 I agree with Nicole's report and would ask that those waivers be granted. Okay, Nicole, did you have anything to add? Um, we just agree with the, the waiver of the two items. Um, if anything comes up during our review, we would ask for it then, but I don't, I don't see it. Okay, anyone from the board have any comments or questions? Do I have to open to the public? Okay. All right, do we have a motion then? I'll move it. Moved by Mr. Schmidt. Second. I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Lauer. 
Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Madam Chairwoman, if I may ask uh, a matter about um, scheduling. Uh, it, it looks like the nearest this application could be heard would be in July uh, because you have some, some pretty big applications on. Uh, so the applicant has asked if I would ask the board if they would consider um, a special hearing at his uh, expense uh, so that we could you know, move the business along here in town. It's a relatively straightforward application uh, seeking relief from a prior condition and uh, providing some more space on the lot. Um, I know it's in a you know it's 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 not a very common request, um, but based on the size of your agendas and the important work that you're doing at your regular meetings, I simply ask the board if it's something they would they would consider a little later this month having a special hearing. Um, we did look at the at the list, and Dawn can give you a better idea. But we are very busy coming up, so there it would definitely be July would probably be the first opportunity for them to be heard if we don't give them a special meeting. Um, we're pretty well booked three and four things on every agenda through then, yeah. And we're looking at what date, Dawn? May 15th. May 15th, if the room is available, and that's a Tuesday. All right, I'm not, I'm not going to be here, but if there's enough board members that are. Does anybody know that they would be available on May 15th? One. Two. Anyone else might be available on the 15th? Three, four, five. All right. We've, looks like with unofficially at least five. So. Okay. I, I understand the, the, the volunteer position that you place. I, I respect that very much. Um, and if uh, that is something that's available and, and you can maybe Dawn can advise me if, if you draw a conclusion, because I, 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 do, I do need to notice for this application, so I'd have to get the notice in the paper. So. We'll, okay. follow, we'll follow that up with an email tomorrow morning and let everybody Wonderful. know officially if, it's, um, if you can or not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your consideration. Have a good evening. <laughs> okay, Thanks thank so. you. Okay. Okay, minor subdivision plan 07-18P, Trinity Bagel slash Bagel. Factory Cafe, minor site plan with sea variants. Maybe the mic doesn't like water. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, I still refer to Mayor Cannon, but I know you don't know yeah. it's out of it's out of historic it's out of historic. Yeah, historic, right. along with Gatrell Farm. <laughs> <laughs> No objection to your notice. Is there anybody in the audience that had any objection to the notice? Seeing none. The board had no objection to the notice that was provided, and was there anybody in the audience that had any objection to the notice? The application for JAB Automotive. Okay. Oh, sorry, you're right. Next file, sorry. Trinity Bagel. The application for Trinity Bagel. Anyone? Good. So you're covered. Okay. Uh, filed by Trinity Bagel uh, and by the nature of the, the name. Uh, here. An application to convert an old pharmacy, if you're familiar with, uh, to Bagel uh, Restaurant. Uh, applicant seeks um, minor site plan and people bearing approval. Nation uh, purposes, the block is 3235 lot one. Tax map in Old Bridge, and the address, of course, is Two Clifford Road. Um, there are a variety of bulk variances. Uh, that them are pre-existing non-conformity, uh, with the exception of the parking requirements, uh, because there is a variant that we need for that on your ordinance, which requires one space per three feet or one space per fifty uh, step, whichever is greater, and under the ordinance calculation, technically, spaces, 
and as you know from the application, 12 are proposed, and we have testimony that will address that. Uh, the property is located in the CN commercial zone district and is permitted zone. Um, I have uh, four witnesses tonight. First is the uh, applicant owner, uh, Mr. Sam Awad. Then I have Mr. Uh, we have uh, Michelle Breinhoff from uh, uh, traffic consultant and our architect. That sort of gives you a sense of the lineup. And if the board doesn't have any questions at this time, we can proceed with our first witness. Okay. Doing that, making that noise. I thought I couldn't figure out which one it was doing. have to have him watch this morning. You raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Please state and spell your name for the record. Spell. Sure. It's Sam, S A M, and uh, Awad, A W A D. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we're going to run through a series of questions, and you'll have an opportunity to go through some of the issues that were discussed in the engineering report that was prepared by the outside engineering firm. Uh, just as a just to orient the board, can you just give the a quick overview of the type of business you tend to operate at the subject property? Thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, well, we're hoping to operate a, a bagel shop um, uh, or a cafe, um, so it would be something. Uh, similar to a fast food um, uh, with uh, availability of seating as well for you know whoever decides to sit in um, we're looking to renovate the property and make it uh, complement or at least uh, 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 be a, a good looking place for Old Bridge um, I understand the location is very unique as well so we're looking to um, make sure that it does um, uh, look good <laughs> as best as we could um, I don't. I don't know if you want to go ahead and ask the question. Well, but. that's fine. So, uh, is it fair to say that you know, and uh, it's your intention to the board grant this approval that significant improvements will be done at the property? I think a, a huge improvement. Correct. Okay. Um, so, mm -hmm. just for orientation, I know that um, Environmental Resolutions Inc., the board's engineer and consultant, did prepare an extensive memorandum and there were many issues that they raised particularly regarding operations so if we could address those uh, they asked. first is if you could just outline for us the days and hours of operation the number of employees maximum of one shift the types of waste and frequency that would be generated removal of that and recyclable so that we could address some of the uh, professionals comments thank you sure uh, I'll give you an idea of what we're looking at uh, initially and you know this is all uh, a project that uh, we're starting so we're looking to operate seven days and um, the hours of, of operation would be from 6 a.m. to uh, 5 p.m. Uh, obviously we would be on premises prior to that uh, with staff to prepare before opening and then at the same time afterwards uh, after the, the business is closed to continue uh, you know the cleanup or, and you know prep for the next day um, so it would be seven days six six to five um, as far as, for example, the second question with employees, uh, at the maximum um, would probably be about, in one given time, uh, about three employees, and then there would, uh, we would try to uh, uh, encourage two shifts, um, uh, hopefully, you know, not three, so, uh, but two shifts with a maximum of three at any given shift. Um, as far as uh, waste and um, frequency and removals, uh, we're uh, looking to contract for twice a week, um, uh, sorry, three times a week. And uh, there will be two dumpsters, uh, I guess two yards, um, and one for, you know, for the cardboards and one for the regular waste uh, that's generated. Uh, recyclables are, uh, are also, we're going to be uh, doing uh, recyclable bins as well. So that's going to, that's in the plan as well. Um, and um, I think that, Covers those issues. Covers those four points. Okay, great. Um, the engineer also asked us to discuss the pickup delivery services that will be offered, and if so, how will that work? Well, we won't be offering any uh, uh, deliveries at, you know, uh, initially. So it would be great for the pickups. I mean, and that would be 
it would help serve the business itself. Um, and then, you know, people usually call, just like I do. I call in before I go and, um, you know, and I go pick up my uh, order and then, I, you know, I'm on my way. So I think that's, that's what we're going to be looking to do at the same location here. Okay. So basically people will call in, they'll come to the store, and they'll pick up and they'll be on their way. Yeah, until we get the apps and then you could, you know, be able to order through Online. an app and then, yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, now, there was an issue also raised about on the, uh, as depicted on the plans, there was an open space area mm. within the, or on the architectural plans, and uh, they asked us to address that. If you could, if you could, that would be helpful. Thank you. Well, I mean, the only purpose, uh, uh, for me, I look at it as me going into a place as well. So uh, generally, I like to go into a place that's a, you know, an open, open space. Um, we're looking to have the way the flow would occur inside the, uh, the cafe or uh, uh, bagel shop uh, would ease the uh, traffic going in and out. So the open space, you would basically come in and then, you know, you would work your way around to, to the counters and then uh, you'd have, you know, payout area and then you're exiting right away. In addition to that, in the future, we want that open space in case we, you know, we also want to uh, include a, um, a snack bar, you know, something uh, so that way as you're walking through, you have, uh, there, there'll be other like chips or snacks or something else as well. Uh, uh, it's never going to be 100%, but you, uh, as you're probably aware, things tend to change. And, and then as, you know, days go by, you see what the business needs and hopefully, uh, you know, we can create uh, something good for Old Bridge. But it's not your intention to add any additional seating capacity in that area. Um, no, no, it's not. Uh, <laughs> it would be on the drawing, and you know, right. no. I, I mean, yeah, the place is going to be there. It's not like we're going to, you know, put the uh, seating and then. Very good. Um, another issue that uh, they asked us to address was the uh, attic space, and there was a question raised whether it would be primarily it would be used for storage as opposed to habitable space. Could you respond to that? No, it's not habitable at all now. Nor are we going to do any renovations to it at all. Uh, we're just probably going to, uh, I mean, we, we have to enclose it better because I think there's some areas when I went up there to see, there's some, like, you know, areas that need to be enclosed properly so we don't have anything coming in or leaks or anything like that. Um, I mean, just to, you know, basically make sure that there's no problems with the structure. Um, other than that, we're not going to do any re renovations to it. Uh, we're, we're looking at taking out the stairs from there now and just have a little access panel or something like that so that way it doesn't... Um, it take more space from the inside. Okay, thank you. Um, another issue that was raised um, was the above ground oil tank. And if you could address that, I think there were comments there as to your intended utilization of that oil tank, and whether it's going to be removed. If not, you will. Yeah, I, 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 we're not utilizing no oil. I don't think it's even operational. Uh, so I think it's on the drawing to be removed. So uh, that has nothing to do with the. Uh, the existing business. Uh, I don't think he was using it before either. <laughs> it hasn't been used for years. It's my understanding that you're going to have gas service to the property. Yes, right? so we've already started at least uh, uh, making contact so we can understand the process of that as okay. well. So. so it's your intention to remove the tank and do whatever's necessary, obtain all the permits required. That's correct. Right? Okay, thank you. Um, I don't have any further questions. Did you want to add anything else of anything we've covered or? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to add a lot more, but this is the first time I do this, so <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Watt. Mm -hmm. uh, Thanks. Madam Chair, I don't have any direct questions of Mr. Watt at this point, but the board members or your professionals might. Um, do you have any? Uh, I don't have any questions about right now. Okay. Do I, <clears> I hope we, do we address every, I think we went through your memo carefully. But uh, I'm, I'm sure there's other stuff that your professionals are going to address, but as far as what the applicants address, that's spot on. Great. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone from the board have any questions? Um, I just, I am familiar with the, ter uh, you know, the property. Now, are, are you going to do anything to the exterior? Oh, uh, yeah. There's, uh, I mean, basically the only thing that we're doing is just leaving the structure up, but we're changing the entire uh, building from front to um, hopefully having, uh, uh, you know, glass, uh, the, the, uh, the whole front would change from stone to stucco um, and some landscaping as well. So, The yeah. architects will address that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, hopefully you like bagels, so and that's good. Uh, yes, Mr. Piscitti. Yeah, hi. Um, can you just explain to me why you need a C variance? I, I'm a little slow. If you could just let me know. Why yeah. do you need a C variance? What is it? 
Why? There are several bulk variances, including the parking variance, the map to see variance, parking requirement. Our, our ordinance requires uh, one parking space per three seats or one parking space for 50 square feet of gross floor area, whichever is higher. Right. So in this particular case, the applicant has uh, 28 seats, which would require nine parking, nine parking spaces, or sorry, 10 parking spaces we round up. Uh, but if you base it off of the square footage, that would be required 46 parking spaces. Oh. And they're providing 12. But that concludes what I have. Yeah. Okay. But we're not providing, I mean, it's there. That's what the parking right. spaces are. That's what I mean. The, the site has 12 parking spaces, basically. So is that the only problem? But that's, issue? Well, that's, that's the. That's, I, I would consider that the most significant. Right. There are pre existing non conformity. Right. And there's a slight, de a slight increase the in the landscape. impervious, well, for the light. Slight like decrease in the landscape area ratio. So instead of um, 0.24, it would be 0.23 in landscape area. So that, that's the only, de there's a slight decrease because there's a, the applicant's putting in a, a trash enclosure, which is a good thing. We, we want them to have a dedicated area to, to put the refuse uh, as far as aesthetics and everything goes. So there's a, there's a value, there's a reason for that. There's a benefit to, for that variance, but there is a slight decrease in landscape area ratio. Okay, thank you. Do any, you're limited to the parking field and the structure, so that's the issue. So I think this. I'm hoping the board agrees that this this use may work there. In any event, any other questions? Excuse me. Did you say th there will be no seating in there? No, there is a seating in there. Oh, there will be. Seating. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. No, okay. I, I, what uh, uh, I think what David was asking was the open space. But go ahead, please continue. Well, how, could you give me an idea how many tables you think you could uh, fit in there? Or? So we, yeah, we were. I mean, we could. You could probably fit, you know, a lot of tables. But uh, what we're looking the area that we want to have as a seating area um, is, uh, I think, it would be about seven tables or so, uh, seven to eight. To, oh. It's five on, but uh, yeah, if we were to do three at a table, so then that, then you know, <laughs> it would be about um, t uh, 28. Uh, so you have um, about eight tables. Eight tables. I, yeah, I could put eight tables if I was to put three seats at a table. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then so five if you were to have. Th there's some counter seating and everything. So, so the applicant's proposing uh, 28, 28 total seats. Yeah. The, the question that I had, Mr. Lauer, was there's a large area. Uh, as you come into the into the restaurant, right. uh, there's there's a large open area that's that's not really defined on the floor plan as far as what the purpose is. And I, I, what I asked the applicant to do was provide some testimony as to why you know what that area is for. And I, I believe the testimony that was that was offered by the applicant is that that's really for the customers that come in and pick up and order. It's like a large queue area. The flow, yeah. It's, it's it's basically so that the customers are queuing in, inside the building uh, rather than I guess in, during busy rushes. I've I've been in places where. You know, if there's not a whole lot of space, people start backing up outside. So I think that's the that's the intent. So you're not going to exceed 28 seats. Is 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 your really your 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 stance? I agree. And I think the other well, the other point was we knew we were going to be potentially looking at a parking variant, so we didn't want to have too many seats in the proposed cafe, so we could manage the parking. Thank you. And you really, I guess the, the fact that they, I, I'm guessing, what well, I'm guessing, I, the applicant's uh, testimony is that they're anticipating a lot, lot of uh, pickup uh, kind of business rather than customers coming in, sitting down, and staying for a while. So that, that sort of lends itself to the, the variance for, for the parking. If you have a high turnover kind of business, you, you sort of need that queue area, and that also works with the, with the reduced parking spaces as well. That is correct. Any other questions of Mr. Law? That's it. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Mr. Weaver is next. And he's our civil engineer and will testify on the site plan and also address the other technical issues of the application. We'll have to have Mr. Weaver sworn in to qualify, please. Ms. Renan, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got Yes, I do. And just spell your name for the record, please. It's Mark with a C, last name is Weaver, L B. Uh, Mr. Lieber, if you would briefly, I know you've been, you've testified before this board, uh, but if you could briefly give your uh, CV, your professional background, the licenses you hold, 
and whether you testified previously, that would be very helpful to qualify that. All right. I've been before both the uh, Township Planning Board and the Zoning Board. In fact, I'm here Thursday night. Um, I have a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering uh, and an MBA from Rutgers Graduate School. I license in the very... Thank you, Mr. Lieber. I would ask the board consider him to qualify as a civil engineer. Yes, that's Thank fine. You. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Lieber, it's my understanding that are under your auspices that you prepared the site, minor site plan, and for the record, I believe that was dated March 6, 2018, which was submitted with this application, correct? Yes. Okay. Could you give the board uh, an overview of the proposed site plan and also a uh, if you could, and we'll go through the engineering memo, but just highlighting purposes, the, the variances that we're seeking, um, the uh, issues relating to grading and lighting and landscaping uh, that were also addressed, and the other technical items, including the waivers, uh, that would be helpful. Thank you. Sure. I have two exhibits. Um, one I have to pass out, the other one I have on the board. Okay. Uh, uh, we will we'll talk the board first. <coughs> this is just a coloring of sheet three that was submitted as part of the application. So we'll mark that A1. Thank you, Don. Another um, set of four photos, correct? You want to identify that as A2? Yeah. Okay. You want to? Mm -hmm. uh, any other exhibits, Mr. Lieber? That's all. Okay, thank you. you can Just work? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, no, it's, she shut it off because of the Yeah, we turned it off because there was noise. Try it. It's in there pretty good. Sound engineer. All right. Hi. Okay. So here I am, Exhibit A1. Uh, it's the coloring of the site plan. And the property is 2 Cliffwood Road. It's block 3235. It's lot one. And I outlined the property in red. The uh, square footage is 12,240 roughly square feet. Uh, it's about 0.28 acres. Uh, it's located at the corner of Morristown Road and Cliffwood Road, just to situate you. Uh, behind the property is a 7-Eleven. Across Morristown, you have CVS and Walgreens. Across Cliffwood, you have the quick check. And then neighboring the property to the east, there's a small strip center. There's pizza in there, um, Evans Restaurant, and I believe a Euro Blinds, if I'm correct. Um, the property only has access on Cliffwood Road. There's a two-way driveway um, set in about 60 or 70 feet from the intersection. There's a traffic light at this intersection. And uh, once you come into the property, there's just a large open paved area. And this building, which is existing, is about 2,300 square feet. Um, the depth is about 29 and the width is about 80. And they, that was a former pharmacy. Um, if you go to exhibit A2, the photos which were taken today, I'll start on the top right. Uh, this is a view of the uh, building as it presently looks. Um, moving down to the bottom right, you'll see the sign Evans Restaurant Greek Food. This is the neighboring strip mall uh, immediately to the left of this property. Uh, in the foreground, you'll see like some broken up asphalt. That's actually on this property, the subject property. And uh, if you look to the bottom left and turn the page a little, you'll see there's a sidewalk presently in front of the building. We're going to be replacing um, the glass door front and the windows will be replaced. And the facade, which the architect is here to talk about tonight, will also be redone. Um, the last photo on the top left, uh, the reason I took that photo is I want to point out 
In that area of the property, you see an existing curb line, which is set in uh, maybe eight or so feet from the boundary of this property with the neighbor to the left. Uh, what we'd like to do there is to create two employee parking spaces, uh, which are indicated on this color plan. And also uh, on the left of that curb, we want to construct a trash pad, which is 6 by 15, surrounded by fence for the two dumpsters. One of the dumpsters is for regular trash and food waste, and the other dumpster is commingled recycling, cardboard, and, um, you know, things of that nature. There is a sidewalk along the front of the site, which seems to be in pretty good condition. Um, and the rest of the site is rather, I hate to say it, barren. Um, there really doesn't appear to be any landscaping. As part of this application, we'd like to change that uh, to install something that's attractive. Um, and also, we would provide building-mounted lighting. There's no mount, there's no, there's actually no uh, lighting on the site right now, so we would be providing lighting. There's a couple of existing non-conformities I just wanted to go through. Um, in the CN zone, for example, the minimum lot area is one acre, and this property is 0.28 acres, so that's an existing nonconformity. The lot width minimum is 125 feet, and you have two frontages here. So you have along uh, Morristown about 102 feet, so it's deficient. That's an existing nonconformity. Uh, front yard setbacks, again, you have two front yards because you're on a corner lot, and the uh, minimum requirement is 50 feet. And the distance to the uh, rear corner of the building is 23.5. Again, that's an existing condition. On the uh, side yard setbacks, uh, the minimum is 25 feet. Uh, the back left corner is 4.3 feet to the property line with 7-Eleven. And that's also existing. And then rear yard setback, um, I guess this, the way this, this is interpreted is that the rear yard would be on the side and you have 50 foot required minimum and we have 14 feet to the building. There is one variance that's both an existing nonconformity but it's being intensified by the application. Uh, on the zoning table we had indicated that the landscape area minimum was 0 0.4 and that we had proposed 0.24. The 0.24 is taking into account that uh, employee parking space in the back and the trash area if you remove those from the plan, then what ends up happening is your existing landscape area is 0.26. So 0.24 is the lower of the numbers, which is reflected on this layout. Um, it is a small lot, and we are kind of working with what we have out there. Um, the minimum aisle width, for example, is normally 24 feet, but we have like an 24 feet. And if you look at the plan, the way that this existing parking lot is, you actually have more than 24 feet here. So for example, if the landscape area ratio at 0.24 was uh, not acceptable, then you know, in theory we could move that curb line to give back more landscape area, but I don't think that that's really perceptible and I don't think it's really necessary. But I just want to point out that we're really trying to work with the amount of coverage that's already on the property, other than adding a parking space and a trash area, which is rather necessary for really any use. Okay, so um, looking at the environmental resolutions letter dated April 26th, I'm on page four, and item one uh, covers the nonconformities and the variances. The only other variance required, uh, which was mentioned previously, is with regard to parking. And we do have somebody here tonight to discuss and provide more information on the parking variance request. Uh, item two, uh, regarding the landscape area ratio, I just gone through how we got to 0.24 and what the requirement is. Uh, item three, uh, again, is regarding parking, which you'll hear about in a few minutes. Item four, requiring a uh, loading zone for a restaurant less than 25,000 square feet. We don't actually feel we need a loading zone. Um, the reason is because the deliveries that are coming to this building will be occurring prior to any activity being uh, taking place on the site. And lastly, item five is that a 50-foot buffer is required for non-residential lots along the front of a tract of Bunning a Minor Arterial uh, again, this is an existing condition. Right now, there's 
no landscaping, but we are going to supplement that to improve that existing condition. Okay, any questions at this point? most likely happen during off-peak uh, initially until we kind of figure out uh, does, does that work best for us or not. At the end of the day, the end of the day we don't want any, any interruption with our business. So we don't want uh, anything uh, you know, blocking the flow of, uh, of customers and um, you know, uh, their convenience. Right. So it's going to happen <coughs> off-peak hours initially and then if we need to go to during hours that we're you know, uh, prepping, which is in the morning prior to 6, uh, and that's what we're going to end up doing. Uh, next thing is the, as far as the types of vehicles, I think probably the most you're going to probably have is, uh, or the biggest would be a box truck, like a, one of those 16-footers or something like okay. that. Okay. Nothing, you know, no trip. What, what kind of stuff do you get delivered? Well, it's just cold cuts and, and you know, and uh, sodas and things like that. It's okay. more of a, you know, you can think of it as mom and pop's uh, bagel shop. So uh, that's what we, you know, okay. our intent. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm on uh, the bottom of page four under waivers. So the required uh, dimension for a parking stall is 10 by 20, and we're proposing nine by 18 along the front with the exception of the handicap stall, which is compliant with different code. And then we also have these employee stalls, which are eight feet wide. Uh, we need a waiver, and you know, truthfully, we're trying to get the most number of parking spaces that's practical on this property because we're working within the paved area that we have today. Um, and nine by 18 is more or less a standard parking stall size for any use other than a, uh, just like a supermarket or a Home Depot Lowe's. So I don't think there'd really be any detriment to anybody by having a parking stall that's nine by 18 uh, as opposed to 10 by 20. On the next item, the minimum driveway width of 24 feet, this is actually a item that is tied to a comment later on the letter, which I, would like to get the board's opinion on. 24 feet's required for the cross aisle within the site. Um, um, above the 24 feet on the west side, on the east side, I only have 23 feet to this space in the corner. Um, I can make that space an employee parking space, which would make it an eight foot wide space, which gets me 24 feet. However, there's a comment later on in the review that the sidewalk that's along the front of the building uh, if you look in the photo, you could see that sidewalk's four feet wide. It's pretty much a standard today that if you were to build this from scratch, you'd have a six foot wide sidewalk. And the extra two feet gives a little leeway in case somebody pulls into the parking space too far and the bumper hangs over the sidewalk. Um, what we could do here is we could, we're going to remove this sidewalk anyway because it's not in the best shape and we're going to put a new sidewalk. But we can widen that sidewalk out to five feet but then we're back to a 23 foot wide aisle because I now stole away my one extra foot. So again, we're trying to work with what we have and you know, although the sidewalk was pre-existing, I'd personally rather see the five foot sidewalk than the 24 foot wide aisle, but I wanted to leave it up to the board if they had an opinion on that. Hey. I can give you my opinion on that. <laughs> I, I, I would tend to agree with the applicant. Uh, that and that the um, five foot wide sidewalk would, would be more of a benefit, especially since really the the twenty three foot wide aisle is really just the one portion of the site uh, where you're where the applicant's proposing employee parking. So the, I don't anticipate that that you're going to get a whole lot of circulation in that area anyway. So yeah. I think there's a there's a there's a greater benefit to the gen the general public by having the five foot wide sidewalk along the front of the building. Okay. Um, under general comments, uh, the applicant had gone through numbers 8 um, and 10. 9, uh, we have a traffic expert here tonight, so we'll come back to that. Uh, that would be tied into number 11 as well. 
number 12, we have an architect here to address. Uh, number 13 is exactly what we were just speaking about, that parking space on the bottom. So I'm going to make that an employee parking space. Um, and what I could do then is this employee parking space on the uh, east, I could widen that one foot and make that a regular parking space. And then the one back here would stay employee. Um, loading number 14, we don't need a loading zone. I did bring with me some turning templates for a box truck showing how he can maneuver and reverse and exit the site. I can hand those out afterwards. Um, number 15, again, is an architectural question, and the architect will be addressing that. 16, the pavement is going to be milled and resurfaced. Okay. And then would you provide the details for that on the, on the plan? Or? Yeah. Okay, 17 is, uh, I believe we discussed with the oil tank, um, it's going away, I believe. And uh, number 18, uh, regarding the building facade, we'll have the architect show you what that's going to look like. Um, there are some facade signs proposed. They are labeled on my plan. Um, one sign along each frontage, no larger than 18 by 3. And we have tonight uh, a signage plan, which uh, we'll get to. Um, on number 20, the, the missing dimensions will be added to the plan. Uh, number 21, the depth of the stall will be added to the plan. Uh, number 22, we're going to provide the five-foot wide sidewalk. Uh, number 23, we're going to restripe the uh, ADA stall to provide the 11-foot width and five-foot um, hatched area. What, what that means is these accessible parking stalls are usually eight feet wide, and then you have an eight-foot wide area next to it that no one's supposed to park in. But what happens is, is people end up parking in that hatched area. So the code was changed to make the stall 11 feet wide, and then there's only a five-foot wide painted area, so it discourages people from pulling into that area that's striped off. So we'll, we'll make that change. Um, 24, we're going to move the handicapped parking sign to the building facade. And uh, 25, we're going to plot the new door location on this plan so that we can resolve any conflicts with the location of the handicap ramp. Um, 26, in lieu of the fence, we'll provide the masonry wall and the spot elevations. We're actually going to provide topography to supplement that survey that was already prepared. Uh, 27, we'll provide site distance uh, triangles. Uh, 28, I actually brought with me tonight. That's the turning templates for the delivery vehicles. And the uh, last one, 29, we did receive a letter from the fire marshal. It was actually just one sentence. It said he didn't have any objections, um, but he reserves the right to comment further based upon our testimony tonight. Uh, grading and drainage, number 30, is a statement um, that this amount of disturbance does not require stormwater management. Um, number 31 is uh, something we'll be able to demonstrate once we provide the topography, just that there's no extra runoff being generated to cause a detriment to the lot to the left. Um, 32, we'll provide the uh, handicapped accessible route to the building and the finished floor elevation. Uh, 33 as well, that includes additional spot elevations, and 34 also, not a problem. Um, 35 is requesting landscaping. We will provide a landscape plan. That landscape plan will buffer the trash area, um, most likely with uh, an evergreen, something columnar and tall. And uh, 37 is regarding an existing tree on the uh, corner here, uh, which we would trim up because it does conflict with the sidewalk, um, or we could remove the tree. Uh, there is a comment in the letter here that the board may wish to discuss if its removal is warranted. And... Um, I don't know if you <laughs> well, I'm not a big fan of just removing mature trees, but uh, there is a, the sidewalk is starting to heave there because of the, the roots of that tree, and um, it may be a good idea to, to, to especially if you're going to be, are you, you're proposing additional landscaping along the front yeah. now, right? So it might be a good idea to, to remove that tree so it doesn't uh, create, you know, heaving in the sidewalk and all that 
or exacerbate that heaving. That would be fine. I mean, we're going to replace it with all new anyway. And then lastly is regarding lighting. We are going to provide a lighting plan. Uh, we're going to try and do as much building-mounted fixtures as possible. Um, there is ambient lighting just from the intersection, and there's a pole light out front, but we're going to provide new lights on the building to light up and illuminate the parking area. Uh, 39 and 40 are some detailed cleanup items, which we agree to do. Okay, last is uh, permits and approvals. We actually have a letter from Middlesex County that they want an application filed, so we will do that. And uh, it, it is exempt from freehold soils because the disturbance area is too small. But um, due to the change in the use of the building, if we need to get an approval from either water or sewer, that would be no problem. I don't expect that to be an issue. Anything else you'd like to add, Mr. Lieber, or do you think you've covered all the issues to your satisfaction? Oh, uh, that's all I have. Okay, let me just ask you, just, I know you testified briefly on the, or you testified on the justification for the variances, uh, and you are, you, are, you are a licensed planner, correct? Oh, thanks. Just, just for the record, do you believe that, and, and as, as uh, the engineer for the board indicated, uh, these, uh, the bulk variances are pre-existing and we're not, does not appear we are exacerbating them, so I assume that that would be, as you iterated in your testimony, um, that would you would concur with that, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, just for the record, since we are seeking a C variance, um, is it your professional opinion that the purposes of the municipal land use law would be advanced from the deviation of the zoning ordinance and that the variance, these variances would be granted without substantial, substantial detriment to the public good and that the benefits of the deviation would substantially outweigh the detriment? Yes, I mean, let's go back to A2 for a second. We all know what the building looks like and what the property looks like. Um, this happens to be a permitted use in the zone. And I think this is a significant improvement. Uh, if you look at the land use law, it discusses heavily upon appropriate use of properties and you know where and what zones and for what purpose. And I think that this is consistent with those types of goals. And I. I don't see a detriment uh, in any of those respects. Thank you, Mr. Lieber, for your testimony. And as always, very thorough. Uh, okay. Chair, Do you have any? Um, no, I think Mr. Lieber done an excellent job going through pretty much everything in the letter. Anybody from the board have any questions? Yeah, uh, yes. Did you say you have a traffic person that's going to be coming up before? Next. Next. <laughs> I lived the stone's throw away from this property for 10 years. And we were customers of Carter Drugs and we frequented Evans and Atelios. And I think this, uh, number one, as you said, this, this is going to be an upgrade. The building is in dire need of rehab. Um, one concern I have is you're going to be drawing a lot of foot traffic. There is to the left of Atilio's, there's an office building across the street behind Quick Check. There's a large office building. And I've been in and around there at lunchtime, and there's tons of people walking to Quick Check and walking across to what used to be the Pizza Hut, which has since been demolished. So you're gonna get a lot of foot traffic, and my concern is that they're gonna be coming from those buildings and walking, that, that parking lot into Evans and Atilio's is an absolute nightmare. It's not even a sidewalk. The only no, way I would ever, Traverse that parking lot was to do a K turn back in. So I was going to go, I could go straight out into the traffic and not have to worry about the K turn going back. Mm -hmm. um, so my concern is the foot traffic coming along, you know, behind the cars that are leaving, or using the narrow sidewalk that goes in front of Atilio's and Evans. Uh, but I think you're going to bring a lot more foot traffic than, than you realize. I also thought you were finished, but I may say something. Before, so beginning foot traffic. There's not enough room to park cars there. Cars are just backing out onto the main road as it is in front of Evans. People in Evans area will park it. 
they not have enough room to get two cars to do this. And then, when they're coming out of either one, Evans or your area, they got to make a right turn only, but half of them are going to make a left turn. You've got all four corners, you've got the drugstore on one corner, you got the entrance to the uh, strip wall, you'll call that on the other corner, you got a quick check on one corner, and then right around the corner from you, if I'm not mistaken, you have the 7 Eleven. Yeah. All congested into this one little area. So between the foot traffic and the amount of cars, it's not very safe. And it's something yeah. to be concerned about. It's like an accident waiting to happen. Yeah, it's more of a concern than anything that I think would, would prohibit the use. I mean, it's, it's definitely a concern. So like I said, we, we were customers of hard drugs. And it was always a tough part about to navigate. Always a tough one to navigate. But it's, I don't remember really seeing any, any major issues, but it's just a tough navigation. Anybody else from the board have any? Yes, Mr. Lauer. I have a couple of questions. Um, you said that, uh, based on your pictures, you said that you're going to uh, mill and resurface this parking lot. And looking at your pictures, it looks like you could use a broom to sweep up what's left. Do you know if the subgrade below that, the base below that, is in good condition? Um, normally what we do is we do a core because we want to make sure if we mill off two inches that there's still something there. Um, cause once in a while you come across a property where you mill off two inches and you're down to dirt. Yes. Yeah. You know, so we, we normally do a core before we actually take that up. If it can't be milled off, then we would have to fix any failed base areas and then go over it. Right. So, so if, if you have to, uh, rebase it, you're willing to do that. Well, we, we normally. The areas that, that you break through. What would happen is you could do a visual inspection to determine which areas of the base are failed. But for this type of a use, we wouldn't wholesale start, you know, a foot down building up a whole new parking lot because it's a light use. Right. And what would happen is any existing curbs along the perimeter, instead of a six inch reveal, would be left with a four inch reveal, which is pretty uh, standard now. Okay. My other question is you just mentioned uh, about the county uh, um, filling out a permit for the county. Do you know at this point if the county is going to request, or both Cliffwood and Morristown County Roads? Um, I think Cliffwood turns into Cliffwood Avenue. I think it becomes think maybe 617. Okay, so that's county. Um, they're, 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 I think they're both county roads. Um, one of the roads actually is it changes from county to local at this intersection. So basically three legs of the four okay. are county. My question is, at, at this point, do you know if the county is going to require a dedication of any sort? I, I don't know the answer to that. I know right now that the paved surface of the road is actually in the property on the radius. That I know for sure. Most of the time um, when we file applications such as this, usually the type of comments we get back are that they don't have a certification on file for the handicap ramp at the driveway. So they either want a certification produced or they want a new ramp with a new certification. Like, you know, for these sites where there's already an existing curb and sidewalk along the frontage, they usually don't have too many comments. But I, I don't know the answer if they're going to want a dedication. So if they do ask for a dedication, it, it would reduce your size of your lot mm -hmm. even sm smaller. Unless they'll be willing to accept an easement, which would be fine. I mean, okay. uh, Thank you. Okay. To be 26 feet. Yeah. The survey, was um, the survey was done by Brunswick, and I'll give you the date. They had actually done a survey 
many, many, many years on this property. It was hand drawn, and they went back and did a new one, which is dated March 28th of this year. I was asking if you were certain, maybe, maybe I, I didn't pronounce correctly, of the width being 28 feet. That's what they had given me on the survey, yeah. 26 feet. Mm hmm. Any other comments? <clears throat> questions for Mr. Lieber? We're good. I'll, I'm not going anywhere, so. <laughs> we have uh, Michelle Bryhill, <coughs> who's our traffic consultant. Next. Oh, um, I'm going to have her sworn in and we'll qualify her. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you go? It's, please, please spell your name for the record. L. Bryhoff, B as in boy, R, I, E, H, O, F as in Frank. Uh, Ms. Bryhoff, if we could just uh, have you introduce your professional qualifications, licenses you hold, um, I presume you testified before the court, you have any problems with that by, and, then, and we could qualify you in the area of traffic consultants. Thank you. Sure. Um, so I have a Bachelor of Science in Civil and Environmental Engineering from Northeastern University. Um, I've been working in the traffic profession for about 10 years now. Uh, I'm a project manager in the traffic planning group at Mazer Consulting. Um, I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of New Jersey. And um, I've testified in front of numerous boards in New Jersey. In New Jersey um, yeah, we accept you. County. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bryho. Um, it's my understanding uh, your office prepared and was retained to do a parking assessment study. Is that correct? Correct. And that report, I believe, was dated April 6, 2018. It was submitted as part of this application. Is that your understanding? Yes. Okay. Would you briefly describe uh, the nature and purpose of that parking assessment study and also your findings and conclusions? Thank you. Sure, so um, as previously mentioned, we, uh, we do require a parking variance for this application. Um, if we were to look at the parking requirement from the number of seats, um, we would be required to have about 10 spaces. Um, however, the ordinance says that the parking requirement is based on um, the square footage because it is a greater parking requirement as per the ordinance. Therefore, the ordinance says we would require 46 spaces. So we're somewhere between 10, at 46. Um, based on the existing um, area of the site, we are providing 12 spaces. Um, so in order to justify that sort of parking variance, we decided that um, it would be best to do uh, a parking study at similar locations um, in the area. The two that we chose were Hot Bagels, located at 368 Broad Street in Red Bank. Um, it's a corner property. Uh, it was an old mechanic shop that they converted to a bagel facility. Um, the other one was Bagel Time, which is on Main Street or Route 79 in Madawan. Um, again, both of the buildings are similar in size, similar in nature. They're both local bagel stores. They're not a chain um, or anything like that. So we decided that those would be probably our most comparable sites um, in the general area. Um, we conducted the counts on March 28th and March 27th from 6 to 9 and then 11 to 1 to kind of capture that uh, morning rush and then that midday kind of lunch rush. Um, so based on the parking counts that we had done at the facilities, we found that the location in Matawan on Route 79 had a maximum observed parking demand of 12 spaces. Uh, the one in Red Bank, which is on Broad Street, again, a corner lot, um, had a maximum parking demand of seven spaces. Um, so based on the observed <coughs> parking demand of those facilities, we felt that the parking supply that we're proposing at our facility would be adequate to support the, uh, the anticipated demand. And that's, that's really what we did in a nutshell. <laughs> and those two facilities that you studied, they were, they were very similar in terms of uh, the style of operation. Right, and they were independent. They're, they are not in strip mall. They're independently located um, buildings, as you would say, with their own isolated parking facilities, uh, which actually isn't easy to find in New Jersey. We were looking at for similar sites and trying to find a bagel shop that wasn't a part of a strip mall was, was a bit of a challenge. 
but um, we felt that these facilities were, were similar in nature to what we're proposing. <coughs> and they were similar in the sense of the roughly the number of seat, seating that they offer? Yep, the number of seating, uh, again, the style that they're just a local bagel shop, they're not a, a Manhattan bagel or, or a chain facility. Um, and again, that they're they're on independent lots with their own parking supply and, and things of that nature. So is it your professional opinion that the proposed number of spaces, I believe it's 12, that the applicant is providing would uh, is appropriate and the site could operate efficiently uh, under the circumstances given the proposed operation? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we looked at the circulation on the site um, as from a passenger car vehicle and a box truck delivery uh, point of view. But Mark had mentioned that we had done some, some auto turn templates um, and were able to, to prove that the, you know, a box truck and that a passenger car can maneuver in and out of the sites. Uh, in and out of the spaces, sorry, rather within the site. Um, and, you know, we believe that the circulation is adequate to support a bagel facility. Okay. Do you, did you want anything else or do you think you've covered it? I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we, we, we yeah. do you have any professionals questions? or board members? I, I'll, I'll ask. Uh, I do have one quick question. Now, um, understand that this is, given the scope and nature of the application, a formal traffic assessment wasn't required. Uh, but we did ask for just a little bit of testimony and discussion about the impact the change of use is going to have on uh, on the existing roadway uh, as far as the ability for cars to get in and out of the facility and possibility of, of, of queuing back up and, and, and congestion at the at the uh, access to the site. Sure. So again, using the sites that we surveyed, the studies, uh, if we were to extrapolate the data from the And that's within one hour. Um, and just to note, too, that um, ITE and the DOT, um, they define a significant increase in traffic as anything over 100 peak hour trips. Uh, as our project would generate, like I said, a maximum of probably 24 peak hour trips, um, we would venture to guess that it wouldn't be a significant impact on the adjacent roadway. Thank you. <coughs> that's it? That's the only question I have right now. Anybody here have any questions? Thank yes. You. Out of your 12 spaces, how many on employee parking? Two or three? Two. Two. So that and that's in 10 spaces mm -hmm. for customer parking. I'm sorry. So there's 12 spaces plus an additional two spaces. So it's 14? No, it's 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 total. Oh, I'm 12, sorry. 12, 12, 12, 12 total. 12 total. Oh, so that makes you 10. Yeah. I look at the extreme right spot and the extreme left spot. And there's virtually no way to K-turn out of those spots, especially the one on the extreme right. So they're going to have to back up and go across the lots and then K at the exit. Um, so those spots, if I were to pull into that lot, I would steer away from those spots. So, so it, it's technically, you need that in like eight usable spaces, in my opinion. And try, I lived there for 10 years, and I navigated that parking lot quite a bit. So. Um, I see what you mean about the, the far right space. I, I do, again, think that it's possible. We did run the auto turn template from the far left space from a passenger car point of view. Um, Mark, I believe, has mm -hmm. those exhibits yeah. with him that he can share with you. Um, but we did provide site circulation. We can provide, if necessary, um, another exhibit for the, the other space. And trust me, I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate because I think it's a great, Would it be? Uh, it's a great idea for this point. Would it be possible to maybe do a small bump out in that at that end for to facilitate a K out of, out of that spot? Since we're doing some additional site work, is that amenable or is that applicant amenable to that? Okay. I just wanted a follow-up question. I know you didn't do a traffic study, yep. but to address some of the comments that you've both of you have raised, <coughs> is there any suggestions that you could uh, think of that would alleviate some of the? Concerns coming from the other, from the adjacent property, or any any signage detail or something we could deal with. As far as the cross access and parking and parking. Uh, 
other spots? Yes. I mean, we could designate that they're for customers only. Um, you know, as far as trying to maintain all of our parking spaces on our site. Um, but like I said, as far as from a circulation standpoint, we do feel that cars can adequately, you know, enter and exit our site and it won't cause an impact on the adjacent roadway as far as them backing up onto, you know, Cliffwood, Cliffwood Road. I, I have, to be honest with you, parked quite a few times in that lot going to Atelier's or Evans to pick up takeout mm -hmm. when that lot was full. Because there's only uh, probably, what, six or eight spots in, in that that area. Mm -hmm. So right. when that would be full around peak time, you know, when Evans was running and, and the Tilio's, all the customers are there, I would park in, in the in the, uh, be close, the drugstore right. a lot. So, so we, could, we could probably, we could try to put up, you know, put up signing. Yeah, you'd have to do something to discourage yeah. the, Correct. that. Yeah. Yeah. Discourage, right. uh, that. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. I, yes. I'm just curious about something. Maybe I misunderstood you. You mentioned Bagel Talk. Um, in, bagel Time. Oh, bagel Time. Yep, okay. on Main Street, on Route 79 in Madeline. Okay. And I misunderstood you on that one. Is that the one on the corner of uh, Broad Street and 516? No, I think that's Bagel Talk. This is Bagel Time in Madeline. No, I know, but I'm yeah. talking Madeline. Oh, no, it's, um, it's on Route 79 North going towards Route 34, so it's just before you get to Route 34. It's actually uh, the intersection mm -hmm. is... By Stewart's? That's exactly right. Okay. By the Stewart's, correct? Correct. Yes, yeah. by the Stewart's, yep. Oh, that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, I go there all the time. They don't have much seating in there. Right. Very minimal seating. Most people, it's in and out. <clears throat> Can I just ask you a follow-up question with sure. regard to the two locations that you did study? The, you said the average time intervals from the patrons coming and leaving was what? Um, well, we studied from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and then 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 p.m. to kind of capture that morning rush and then the midday rush. Um, based on the peak times in which they came to the site, yes. um, our data found that our peak times occurred somewhere between 8 and 9 in the morning. That, was, that wasn't my question. Oh, I'm sorry. My question is what was the average time? Oh, the, that they were there? That they were there. That came, as far as turnover? Turnover. But you, you, you calculated, so, so between the hours of, you said, 8 and 9? Yeah. So how many, how many patrons had come between those hours? Well, that's when we, um, we didn't actually do a turnover count. We just did the parking counts in the, in the parking lot. So okay. that doesn't actually, because they're conducted in five minute intervals. It's five minute intervals. Yes. Okay. So, so it doesn't technically equate to a turnover time. Um, that's a separate count. But we did do five minute intervals to try to capture as much turnover as we possibly could. Because they are, like you said, a quick turnover. Yeah. Understood. Okay. Thank you. I don't have any further questions. Um, uh, Casey? I have a question. I know you said you did um, studies to see if the trucks could turn around. If you pulled into the parking lot and you parked parallel to Cliffwood Way, if you look at the plan, there's like R7-1 right there. If you illegally parked, how does that affect the cars that are properly parked in the spots backing out? As far as a passenger car or like a delivery? A, a passenger car because there's not enough spots. I think everybody understands that. And people are going to pull in. They're going to illegally park now to go get their breakfast. Is that going to be an issue? Oh, so if they park, I see where you're doing, where you're, yeah. So, I mean, we would, is that the R7-1? Is that no parking? Yeah. So we actually have that R7-1 sign. Okay. So we are, again, with signage and and we will police that yeah. to, to uh, yeah. within the parking field. If we see someone in the parking, we'll go out and we're going to ask them to move the car. But. Question is, if I heard correctly before, you said that there were employees per shift in there. That's what I had heard. I, I just heard that two and possibly three. Yes, yeah, correct. You're not going to be able to run that store and police the outside. <clears throat> Any other questions?
questions of how much support you are. Will the people leaving the parking lot uh, still be allowed to make a left and cross, let's say to get down on a parkway, the three lanes of uh, traffic? Or are you going to still allow lefts out of there? Okay, so during the peak hours, if there's a backup, people are just going to have to wait. Yeah. Or go right. Yeah. Yes. I don't think it's not a restricted left turn there. And I believe when we go to Middlesex County, they not permit the left turn out, then we would have to comply with that. But I think the county planning board will review that. Yeah, oh, you're right at the stop. The, the, the concern really is, is people trying to make a right, make a left out of the site and then a right down Morristown because they have to cut across basically four lanes to, to, to make that maneuver. That's a, a bigger concern than folks maybe going straight down um, Cliffwood. Um, I think it's fair to say that if the board has concerns about that, the applicant would be willing to restrict that no left turn. But I mean, obviously the county's going to weigh in on that. Yeah. They probably have jurisdiction over that. So. I think it's just common sense. I mean, you know, right. exactly. wherever, whatever intersection as to whether you make a left turn or not is, is a judgment call in terms of, you know, how much traffic people, is coming. You would hope that people would use appropriate judgment. Yeah. Oh. So, um, just in general, regarding bagel stores, I mean, you know, you stop at a bagel store that's, that's on your way to work or, you know, on your way to your errands or wherever you're going. So, you know, we feel a predominant amount of the traffic is probably going to be a right in, right out type movement. Um, generally, like I said, people are stopping in and then they're continuing on their way. Um, that so intersection <laughs> is a hub to exit 120 to the park. So that traffic backs up down Cheesequake Morristown Road all the way around the bend by Gordon Road. And people actually break out onto the shoulder and fly up the shoulder to make a right in order to, or to go straight through <coughs> down to Cliffy. And that in the morning, so I know all my kids when we lived there <coughs> got on the school buses in the morning. And they used to actually blow past the school buses. And so a cop had to sit out there on Balmoral and he was pinching people as they were coming down the shoulder. A cop was, it was like shooting fish in a barrel. So that whole intersection, and it's specific, specifically in the morning when school traffic and buses, and it's a nightmare. So uh, that is peak breakfast time, bagel time. So it's, uh, it's all a concern. <clears throat> also with foot traffic coming from the two office buildings, they're not going to be driving over, they're going to be walking over, and they're not going to be crossing at the light. It's, a, it's just a dangerous thing. There. And it, this has nothing to do with what you're looking to build. I'm talking just with what's there what's now. Right. It's a horror. <clears throat> uh, I, I think part of the uh, part of the saving grace, if you will, and I understand because I've been to those locations, is that hopefully the the time that we're <coughs> open versus the other restaurants that there is not a big crossover. So that may that may help. I understand there's an existing issue there now. I understand that. People, no, no, I understand. I understand that, but I don't, I think the testimony you're hearing is that this use is probably the most benign that you could hope for in terms of impact to adjacent roadways and the, and there's. Yeah, well, I don't think we're disagreeing with that. I don't think anybody is. There's an existing problem, but maybe the, maybe the township needs to review that. Perhaps. Right. And I think it certainly would be an improvement over what exists there, which is that whole area is such a disaster. I mean, that little shopping center next to I mean, it looks like, ugh. Anyway. Um, Any other questions for our traffic consultant? Okay. Um, I have nothing You have it. nothing more. Okay, I'm going to open it to the public. Is there anyone here from the public that wants to ask a question or have any comments? 
We still got the architect. Oh, we have an architect? Okay. Yeah. We'll be brief. All right. Well, I don't see anyone from the public at this point, so we'll reopen it after the architects then. Haney Dimitri, who's our uh, architect, will be testifying on the architectural plans, and we would have him sworn in. Yeah. As he comes forward, you can, you can, you can take that. Put it over. Keep it because we might That's fine. Perfect. Can't see. You raise your right hand. <clears throat> Whoops. Okay, you have to get sworn in. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Please spell your name for the record. Handy Dimitri, Handy is H A N like Nancy Y, last name Dimitri, D E M E T R Y. Thank you. Very good, Mr. Dimitri. Welcome. Uh, just want to qualify you as, a, as an expert witness in architecture. Just give me give a brief background on your professional qualifications and the license you hold, please. All right, I, um, I have a graduate degree in architecture that's uh, from Azud University that's back in Egypt. And uh, I, then I moved into New York in 2001, started my uh, license studies. Uh, I am a licensed registered architect in New York State. And um, I've been practicing uh, work since 2004 in New York and New Jersey. And, um, I'm part of a firm that's uh, applying for all the permits and the applications, architectural work, and uh, my partner is the professional engineer that's uh, I'm the professional engineer in New, New, York, uh, New Jersey State. Uh, okay, thank okay. you. You're thank you, Madam Chairman. Okay, um, Mr. Dimitri, I understand uh, your office prepared uh, the architectural plans that were submitted as part of this application, correct? Correct. Okay. And have you brought any exhibits with you this evening? Uh, that we need to mark. What I have brought, these are the plans that were previously submitted. Um, Is there anything different than, than what was submitted? The colored um, facade <clears throat> view. Okay. So why don't, we, why don't we mark those as A3, Three. I believe. <clears throat> Dimitri, if you would describe what A3 is, and if you would walk the board through uh, the exhibit, and I presume it's the uh, elevations and floor plan, and also some uh, schematic on color scheme, correct? Correct. Um, so um, exhibit A3 would have the existing floor plans, existing um, facade elevations uh, of the building, and the proposed layout for the new bagel uh, cafe shop and um, a two-dimensional um, facade of the um, Clifford Road and uh, Morristown Road and uh, a Clifford Road uh, rendering with the showing the new open glass. The main concept of the whole place when we started this is to change the way the building looks. The approach is, it has a one entrance all the way far right, could barely find it. And then it showed like um, existing openings that were blocked up with any type of material just for the sake of getting shelving on the inside. Um, so the main concept was to open up the whole place and make it visible from visible for people in tra sitting in traffic or at the corner, at the traffic light, through the whole store, including the preparation area, uh, the bagel oven, there's a big uh, eight, eight foot wide window where you're uh, filling in your coffee, you could see them actually baking the, the, the bagels and, and doing the dough on the left side. And you have a, a side view of the cooking area and even with the countertop while you're putting in your order, you still have some kind of view of the preparation area from the inside. So everything would be open and visible. That's why once you walk into the space, you have a big open space, you don't feel the space. The, the building, it's big for, it's existing and it's, it's, it's on the property, it is what it is. The size wise, it's not so big for a restaurant to come in, 
but it's 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 just the right size for that type of use and it has to look spacious <coughs> that's the thing to bring in as much possible as much as possible daylight and at the same time make it feel spacious whoever is there even waiting on an order picking up a phone call he has some space to move he's not just waiting on an order in a tight um, standing area that was the main concept uh, putting in two new bathrooms uh, with the new hot water tanks, uh, the cooking spaces, uh, the soda machines in the back, and the coffee uh, uh, station. Uh, that's basically all that it's, there is. And as far as the, the schematic color scheme? What, the what schematic showing? is showing the new uh, entrance door, which right towards the middle. It's not right in the middle because we have the water meter right in the middle. Um, so it's off the center a little bit with two big open uh, windows next to it to the right that's facing the that's closer to the corner of Clifford and uh, Morristown and um, these are two big uh, uh, just a different colored uh, panels for any kind of um, special offer special um, you know promotion on on, on their um, uh, uh, the, the food that they uh, would be preparing, and then the signage, just straight up. What type of treatment for the facade? Gonna be brick the or We're proposing um, EFIS, stucco uh, finish, um, easier to clean and maintain. And then stones probably for the um, little planters up the front. The rest would go up with the EFIS. Now, addressing some of the comments uh, in the engineering memorandum, uh, Mr. Watt did testify uh, with regard to the large area in the restaurant, and you concur that that primarily is for a queuing area, correct? Correct. Um, as far as the um, attic space, for the, you concur that it's only for storage use? It is for storage. It's not even... Um Comfortable height for a stand-up pews. It's barely five foot ten inches, and we're not enlarging it. Actually, we're making it more difficult to get up there because there's a permanent uh, spiral staircase right in the back that we're removing, and we're just keeping it as an opening for storage. So you just go in with a portable um, ladder. I know that we also will be providing signage details, and you'll be working yes. with our engineer on that. Correct. Correct. That addresses, I guess, comment yeah. 19 in the uh, <coughs> letter report. Um, I think we've addressed all the comments regarding architectural issues. <coughs> Is there anything, Mr. Dimitri, you'd like to add further? Not much. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, we could open this up to board questions and professional support. Okay, do you have any? Comments? I have nothing further for that. Okay, so are you you're gonna cover the brick with stucco? What, what? The existing brick? Yes. It would add on to the insulation of the building. At the same time, it would make a, give it a cleaner look. Okay, and what color is the stucco going to be? It's in the beige browns family. Okay. And then those panels, or what, what are they going to be? Those would be uh, solid beige panels uh, for additional uh, temporary uh, uh, posters or uh, offers that they would... Um, but, I mean, that would be stucco also? That would be stucco as well, yes. Okay. With raised uh, border. Okay. Anybody have any questions on the board? Yes, Mr. Lauer. Uh, based on the uh, existing conditions uh, and, and your, your uh, drawings up on the board there, uh, you're raising the roof on the right-hand side of the building facing it? We're just raising the parapet. We're not actually touching the roof. We're just raising the part to make, give a continuous look. Okay, so, okay, so the, uh, and that the front. Uh, 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 that's the attic space. The difference in height. Yes. We're not increasing the attic space. We're just taking that wall and continuing it at the same level. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the board have any questions? The architect. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, we don't have any further. Uh, testimony. Uh, obviously, our, our experts are here to answer your questions or the professional's questions, and I presume you, you may open to the public with that. Okay. Is there anyone here from the public that wants to speak regarding the architect's testimony? 
seeing no hands, we'll close the public portion. Thank you. Okay. Did you want to sum up, or are you just? Yeah. I mean, so I think, Madam Chairman, I think we've we've satisfied, I would hope, um, your professionals' um, uh, report. We've identified and addressed, I believe, all the technical comments. I believe we've satisfied the requirements for the variance justification and relief. We think this is a vast improvement to this proposed uh, for this proposed uh, project, and we think that uh, this would be an appropriate use. Uh, I think you heard our traffic consultant indicate that this would, that the parking, although we heard the board's concerns with regard to the surrounding commercial properties, but um, I think the parking number of spaces that we're providing are adequate uh, for the proposed use, and we would ask the board to favorably consider this application. Thank you. Hey. <clears throat> Does anyone from the board have any questions or comments? Make sure we note that last spot, not the K. It's, right. it's noted in my notes. Yeah. Um, and that's going to change the impervious again, so we're just going to need the number. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's, I, yeah. yeah that's a good point. You're going to have a slightly right. higher. I can, um, I, can, I can do that for you. If you can give me the number so we can make sure we get that into the resolution. That'll... That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay, did you want to review the sure. Um, so the application is for a minor site plan with C variances. Uh, the main variance is for the uh, the number of parking spaces where 12 are proposed. Um, they have agreed to comply with all the professional memos, and they're going to add the five-foot-wide sidewalk at the edge of the building. They're going to change the employee space to the one that's along the, the street. Uh, they're going to add a turnaround area for that right side space, which is going to change their impervious cover. But the board, it's again, slightly, so they're slightly increasing the pervious cover from previous um, and even more from originally proposed in this application. Um, but the board deems that more important that there's a safe way to change that space than that the impervious remain as it is. Um, so it's a parking variance that's being granted and the um, impervious coverage and the landscape area ratio that's being impacted. And the other ex um, variances are pre-existing and are not being exacerbated. So we're just confirming the other pre-existing um, variances that exist. And just to add, Ms. Carey, so we would also agree to comply with filing any outside agency approvals required, which I have on page uh, nine, or I'm sorry, page eight okay. of uh, your engineer's report. And that would obviously include the county planning board and we would agree to any conditions, which may include no left turn out, or however the county planning board may uh, see that as an appropriate uh, issue. So we would agree to comply with those conditions as well. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you. Yes, Mr. Piscetti. Um, this property in its current condition is blighted. It's awful. Um, so, you know, I would love to see it redone. It would be really nice. Um, and it's a tough spot. You know, it was a tough spot from the beginning, I'm sure. Um, so, you know, I'm not, um, you know, I don't have the first-hand knowledge like uh, Mr. Marucci has. But, um, you know, just from the pictures and what I've seen passing by, uh, this would be a marked improvement to that corner. Um, so. Uh, I plan to vote yes for this, and I would hope that the rest of the board members would vote the same way. Thank you. Yes, I would just like to agree with Mr. Piskitty because I also have thought it's just an awful, even when it was first built, it was awful looking. <laughs> it got worse with age. And, you know, it is a busy intersection, but this certainly isn't going to make it any worse or any, you, you know, it's it's busy because you've got the drug you know the part two pharmacies and the the office buildings and everything else that you know this is going to be a drop in the bucket compared to what they contribute to the and I, I think the timing of, of you know your peak hours and stuff probably will not exacerbate the situation so I certainly intend to support it so anyway can we have a motion you want to make that Mr. Piscitti yes. okay motion to approve is there a second and second, Mr. Marucci? What, Marucci? Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lennon? Yes. Mr. Marucci? Yes. Mr. Payne? Yes. Mr. Lucas? 
Yes. Yes. Good luck. Thank you very much for your, for your approval and for your thoughtful consideration. Okay, thank you. Can we a quick time for the recording? Okay. We'll take a five minute break while you. <laughs> Four. Amended preliminary and final site plan and major subdivision with C variances. Good Mr. Shimanowicz, you want to tell us what's going on? Yes. Good, good evening, uh, <laughs> Madam Chair, members of the board. Ron Shimanowicz here on behalf of the applicant Woodhaven Meadows LLC. Uh, the application that was just called is for Section 2, Phase 4. But I think before I introduce that application, just housekeeping wise, if we could just make an announcement, the applicant has um, decided and requested not to go forward tonight with the other item on the agenda, which is the phase three application. Uh, we did receive a, a letter of correspondence from your council uh, pointing out that the height of one of our buildings would exceed the height allowed by this board to you know, still have jurisdiction. So we're going to modify that application to become conforming and come back to you. So. God what? bless. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight we'll just be presenting that. the phase four application. The phase three we would ask to be adjourned. So I don't know if you want to handle that announcement now or we could do it at the end. Okay, say so we're just adjourning it. We're not continuing. We're going to adjourn it so we do need a new date. It's, it's noticed, so we would need to announce a new date for that uh, phase three application. Okay, but you, you don't have a date yet. Yeah, we we do not have a date yet, no. June 12th. June 12th. Okay. So if anybody's here for the, let me get it right, the phase. Phase three, Woodhaven. Three, Woodhaven. We're adjourning that to June 12th. Very good. Further notice. Thank you. Now turning back to the application at hand, which is the section two uh, phase four application. The applicant is seeking uh, from the board tonight amended preliminary major site plan and subdivision approval as well as final major site plan and subdivision approval for the phase four section of, of Woodhaven Village. The, the lot in question uh, is a portion of the overall Woodhaven project and it's known as lot 2.14 in block 22,001. <clears throat> Again, this uh, was part of the Woodhaven uh, GDP that received approval way back when. It's also part of the Section 2 approval that this board uh, approved uh, back in 2012. Uh, the existing Phase 4 consists of 116 units. The proposal, in a very simplistic sense, is to reduce that to 88 units. So we're going from 116 in Phase 4 to 88. Uh, my first witness, Bill Life, is going to put a little more meat on the bone as to how we're doing that reduction. But it's a pretty simple application. You'll see that the site plan uh, as amended is uh, very similar to the site plan that was approved. Uh, there are some variances required, uh, variances that are similar to ones previously granted by this board for uh, distance between buildings. And there's a couple of design waivers. Uh, the uh, last comment I'll make is the board has adjourned the phase three application. Uh, we were planning on presenting those together. Uh, there is a connection between the two, the phase four and the phase three. Uh, some of the units are coming uh, from phase four into phase three, and my first witness, Bill Life, will describe that, but you're not going to actually hear the phase three application tonight. You'll hear that on June 12th. And with that introduction, unless there's any other housekeeping, uh, my first witness would be Mr. Bill Life. I'm going to have Bill come forward. <clears throat> Barry, we'll affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So yeah, I hope you got it. I do. Just spell your name for the record. Uh, my name is Bill 
Her last name is Eif, I-A-F-E. Bill, you're well known to the board, but just for the record, if you could give us your position with the applicant. I'm a project manager with Woodhaven Village. I'm in charge of um, <coughs> uh, design and, and permitting. Okay. And before you get into the nitty gritty of the, the unit shift between phase four and phase three, maybe you could just give the board a little background on why it is that we're changing this, because we are already approved by way of the section two approval. Uh, Woodhaven section two does have a uh, preliminary approval. Um, <coughs> Phases three and four are, are somewhat related in the application we'll be talking about tonight. Um, phase um, four <coughs> was 116 units. Um, we're proposing to do um, 88 units now. Phase three was 48 units. We're proposing to do 94 units, but that application will be postponed. I will give you an overview of both of them, though, um, in <coughs> for tonight. So it all makes sense. Scott, could you put up the <coughs> proposed application? Uh, okay, I'll make sure he speaks up. Can you take Why don't we mark those boards when he comes back? Yeah, as soon as he gets organized. Yep. First, I will show you the old application, the uh, approved versions of phases three and four. So if you mark, mark that, that Exhibit A-1, just tell us what it is. Exhibit A-1 is titled Woodhaven Village, Phases 3 and 4, Overall Plan Exhibit as Approved. Okay. Phase 4 is in the bottom left, and Phase 4 consisted of uh, one 52-unit age-restricted building, one 24-unit affordable building, and 40 units in four buildings of market um, multifamily. <coughs> now, parenthetically, in these 40 units of market multifamily, three of them would be assigned as affordable units. But I'm going to speak of them as if they're 40 multifamily units to, to try to keep it a little bit simpler. That's the, as a, that's the approved version. In phase three, there were three 16-unit multifamily buildings, 48 units altogether. So when you add everything together, there's 164 units. <coughs> One last thing. Get rid of that. Yeah. Get rid of that. Thank you. <coughs> so on one, the approved plan, you're going to, which still is still on, still on A1. Still on A1. Okay, on the approved ahead. plan. There's also a recreation center in the back of Crystal Drive, behind the, one of the apartment buildings. We looked at this plan and we thought we could do a little better because we have a mix of three different uses in phase four and we have a recreation center that's kind of in the back. <coughs> so <coughs> we developed a new plan <coughs> with the same number of units I'll mark this one into evidence. This is Woodhaven Village, <coughs> phase three and four, overall plan exhibit proposed. And that'll be A2? Yes. <coughs> In this plan, which is the same total number of units, um, except for the townhouses, which I'll talk about in a minute, <coughs> the same number of units as in the approved plan, except for 18 townhouses, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, phase four has 88 units. They're all multifamily <coughs> flats. Um, the buildings are all the same size now. There are five 16-unit buildings and one eight-unit building. And in these multifamily buildings, there are still going to be three affordable units assigned in these. 
And one of the planners' comments was, which buildings would they be in? And it's building number one and building number 5.1. There'll be one in one and two in the other. Uh, in phase three, we have moved the 52 age restricted to phase three. <coughs> and we're trying to make a, a, a grand entrance to it. <coughs> we moved the Mount Laurel building, the affordable units, to phase three. <coughs> so that building gets moved <coughs> across the street. We move the rec center from the back of Crystal to front on Woodhaven Boulevard so that it presents better to the community. So that's accessible to phases one and two, phase four and phase three, and the affordable units. It's much more centrally located. Um, <coughs> it lays out better. The pool is behind the building. The parking lot is in the front. It, it just presents better, and it's larger has the same amenities as it had before, but it's just a little bit bigger. Uh, and we do include a maintenance facility inside the um, clubhouse building. But this one's not, we're not ap um, applying for this one tonight. I just wanted to let you know what it, what it is, so that when you see them both together, um, the units that went from the old phase four into phase three, we didn't lose them. They just went, they're just going across the street. <coughs> Beyond that, um, we moved <coughs> from the rest of the Woodhaven GDP. The Woodhaven GDP allows <coughs> 1,616 units, and that's it. So from a future phase, which is section three, um, we took 16 single-family houses that were on tough lots and turned them into townhouses um, in section two back here behind phase three. These are much more, um, these are better, better lots. Um, no environmental constraints, none of, the, none of the wetland issues that we're, we're battling with in Section 3. So we're loosening up Section 3. <coughs> so that's, that's the, the movements between one phase and the other. So the age-restricted building, although it's going out of Phase 4, it's going into Phase 3 as a more attractive building. The building in Phase 4 was a very long um, building. <coughs> we're trying to make a more compact building in Phase 3. And that's it for the comparison. And now I'll just go back to phase four. <coughs> so phase four is <coughs> 88 units in. So I think we need to mark this exhibit. This will be exhibit A3. Yes, this will be exhibit A3. And it's titled Woodhaven Village Phase Four Site Plan Exhibit Proposed. Thank you. And instead of phase four having three different disparate uses, phase four has um, multifamily apartments in it. It conforms with the GDP zoning. We have fewer units. Um, the GDP zoning goes between six and 15 units per acre. This works out to eight. This is a, this is a, a 10 acre medium density parcel on the GDP. <coughs> 88 units on 10 acres is 8.8 .8 to the acre which is in between the six and the 10, so it complies with the zoning. Um, there are a few variances for building separation, which uh, my planner will um, provide some testimony on. Thank you, Bill. And nothing further, Mr. Eif. I don't know if there are any board questions or consultant questions, otherwise we'd move on to our engineer. Okay. Oh, Mr. Piskitty. Yeah, I don't know if uh, I'm doing my math right, but you said um, <coughs> phase four is 116 units, uh, less to 28. You're moving to phase three, brings you to 88 units. Is that correct? Uh, I have a handout that might help square all the accounting. A4. Yep. Bill, if. What's that? Uh, no, we've done A1 through 3. Uh, Bill, if you will hand them out and when we come back, we'll describe what Exhibit A4 is. And then you went on to say um, Phase 3 had 48 and now 94. 
which is an addition of 46. <coughs> So I guess my question is just the quantity of units is basically the same. Is that correct? Uh, the quantity, well, let me, let me go through the, the exhibit really quick. The quantity of the units between phases three and four are 164. Uh, the, the first page of the tables I gave you, you'll see a before, a relocations, and then an after. In the before condition, phase three had 48 units, 48 multifamily units, and it had 48 units total. Phase four had 40 multifamily units, 24 affordable units, and 52 age restricted is 116. If you add 48 and 116 together, you get 164. The, the uh, transformation or the, the manipulation is to take 48 units from phase three, move them to phase four. So phase three goes down by 48, phase four goes up by 48. <coughs> take 24 affordable units out of phase four, put them in phase three, Phase three goes up by 24, phase four goes down by 24. Same thing with the age-restricted units, take them out of phase four, phase four goes down by 52, phase three goes up by 52. Um, the parentheses are an accountant's way of saying a negative number. Um, so the manipulation is phase three goes up by 28, phase four goes down by 28. And in the after condition, after you add those things one, one for one, phase four ends up with 88 multifamily units, um, Phase three ends up with 24 affordable units and 52 age restricted units. So phase three has 76 and phase four has 88. And again, parenthetically, of those multifamily units in phase four, three of them will be assigned as affordable. But that would really complicate the table. <coughs> then on top of that, you go to page two, and I'm going to move some units from section three into phase three. So. <coughs> We, if we start out with phase three, just after the phase four changes, phase three has 24 affordable units, 52 age restricted, <coughs> which is 76, and section three has 380, and those are planned. Those are not, that's not an approval. That's, that comes from the GDP. So that's a budgeted number in section three. The manipulation here is to take 18, 18 single families, proposed single families out of section three and change them into 18 townhouses in phase three. So phase three goes up by 18, section three goes down by 18. Uh, and then phase three after the two changes is phase three has 24 affordables, 52 age restricted, and 18 townhouses, there's 94. <coughs> and section three goes from 380 down to 362. So between phases three and section three, you start with 456 and you end up with 456. Thank you. Any other uh, questions of Mr. Wright? Our next witness would be our site engineer, Mr. Scott Turner. We could have Mr. Turner sworn. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? <clears throat> so help you God. I do. Just spell your name for the record, please. Scott Turner, T-U-R-N-E-R. Scott, if you could give the short version of your qualifications, I believe you've been. Yeah, uh, he was here last accepted. time. That's okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, the Thank board, you, the board accepts your qualifications, Thank which you. is terrific. Uh, Scott, if you can concentrate on, I guess it's going to be Exhibit A3, which is the current site plan for Phase Four, and just give the engineering overview of what's now being proposed as Phase Four of Section Two. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to keep my testimony uh, rather brief because there are very. Uh, minimal changes, in my opinion, uh, when you look at phase four. As Mr. Reif already testified to, the buildings have gone, the unit count's gone down from 116 to 88. Uh, the L-shaped building in the middle of the, uh, the, the horseshoe-shaped uh, driveway, uh, known as Peterson Drive, has been removed and replaced with two multifamily buildings. Uh, the phase four now includes six multifamily buildings, uh, and they are buildings one, two, three, four, 
5.1 and 5.2. Uh, there's been no change to the intersection of Peterson Drive with Woodhaven Boulevard. Peterson Drive, and for all intents and purposes, is uh, identical to the uh, prior approval in terms of geometry and shape. Uh, we did modify the number of parking spaces. Uh, the parking spaces previously approved were 237 parking spaces. We're providing 181 parking spaces with this new plan, which is in uh, conformance with the New Jersey Residential Site Improvement Standards. Uh, we've also provided sidewalks on both sides of the street. Uh, LED uh, lighting uh, is still uh, uh, in the picture, as well as, of course, all of the landscaping, which includes uh, all of the uh, trees, ornamentals, and uh, flowering trees, and the like, as well as shrubbery and ground covers. Uh, we've provided adequate trash enclosures around the uh, around uh, Peterson Drive to accommodate the, the units. And uh, the utilities and the stormwater management has all been designed in conformance with uh, standards, including the RSIS standards. Uh, and there's a stormwater management wet pond that's located on the uh, on the westerly side of the uh, property of, of phase four, uh, which as uh, is, is per the previous approval, and it really has not changed uh, a whole lot, and it will be surrounded by a four foot high uh, post and rail, triple split rail fence uh, to encompass that for safety purposes. Uh, we are in conformance with all of the zoning standards, we believe, with the exception, of course, of the, uh, the issue with the uh, maximum uh, or minimum uh, spacing requirements between buildings, window wall to window wall, and we, of course we have our planner here to testify to that. And then we have a couple of design waivers to address, one of which is the minimum parking space size. Your ordinance requires 10 foot by 20 foot stalls. We have 9 foot by 18 foot stalls, which are in conformance with RSIS standards, and a uh, disturbance of sensitive areas. Uh, which, as uh, <clears throat> testified on many occasions prior, is in conformance with the AACO. And as Mr. Remsa points out as well, uh, the proposed buildings really have not changed much from this plan to the previously approved plan. <coughs> we have two, we have three reports. We can go through the reports quickly. Mr. Remsa's report we have is dated uh, February 19th, 2018. And we can jump right to uh, the second uh, page. And we have a little bit more testimony to deal with the, with the bulk variance issues, which we will do. Uh, at the bottom of the page, item 6, uh, A through a, a and B. And then on the final page, on page 3, we have C, 1 through 3, <clears throat> and then D, A through C, and then E, uh, all of which are, I believe, technical issues that we will agree to comply with in Mr. Rems's report. And we also have a letter from... Uh, Mr. Darzi's Office, Environmental Resolutions. It's dated April 27th, 2018. Uh, and I did go through this uh, letter in detail, <clears throat> and we can agree to comply with all of his uh, questions and concerns. Uh, in, in, he, he did ask for a little bit of testimony in regards to some of the drainage uh, conditions. Uh, we, did, uh, we, we did modify the stormwater management system slightly. Uh, so there is a, uh, an increase in runoff in one particular area as opposed to where the drainage had gone before. Uh, we believe, however, that the, in, when you look at it in its entirety, the entire Woodhaven development, and you look at peak rates of runoff, uh, we are still well in compliance with the uh, standards that we need to. And there has no impact at all whatsoever to other surrounding uh, neighbors. So uh, we'll, we'll provide Mr. Dorji with whatever uh, backup calculations he needs to, to address that. Was it? Yeah, just for just for the board's uh, edification, could you tell them? Uh, do you have an, more of an overall uh, rendering that we they might be able to pop up on the screen? I just wanted you to describe to the board where the decrease is and where the where the increase is as it relates to adjoining property owners. Uh, it overall, the section two drainage is there's a slight increase overall, but uh, I just want, I guess, again, I just wanted to, just for the board's edification, the, the increase in runoff is actually directly in the area where it goes to Barkley Brook as opposed to uh, the residents along Texas Road. So I, I guess just want Bar Scott to put that on the record. Sure, yeah. We, what we did is we, we pulled some drainage away from Section 2 as we redesigned some of these sections, which is up in the upper 
uh, upper section of uh, exhibit. I'm looking at exhibit A2. Uh, we, we grabbed some of that drainage flow and we brought it down into uh, heading down towards the southwest towards phase, phase four. And we've uh, ran that through the wet pond that we've designed for phase four. And that discharges directly just to the north of Barclays Brook into a wetland area. Uh, and again, there's no impact to any surrounding uh, neighbors. Uh, it, it discharges into that wetland complex and, and ultimately into Barclays Brook. Actually, Mr. Reif just wants to add to that uh, explanation. Sure. So if you grab the mic, please, Bill. The original drainage design had some of phase three going um, easterly, <coughs> and it would drain to a large wetland complex that's it's kind of off the map, and then out to Texas Road. Um, that's the that's where the the original drainage divides and everything else had the drainage going. <coughs> We've had some issues with the drainage down in that area. There's some residents that say the flooding is worse than it was before. So in anticipation of that, we have taken the drainage from this area, which originally in the improved plans went toward Texas Road. And we've sent it down toward the Barkley Brook, which is going to go out to Englishtown Road and then we're near Texas Road. So there are no residences where the water is going, where we've diverted some of the water now. There's more water going, going toward the Barkley Brook than used to go to the Barkley Brook, but that water would have gone to Texas Road. We've changed the direction that we're sending the water. So the flows are higher down at the Barkley, down at the Barkley Brook area. <clears throat> that was done intentionally to get as much water as we could away from the Texas Road area. On the Texas Road side of things, there's Middlesex County's property, which is a very large flat area that's mostly wetlands that you can't go in and, and drain. DEP doesn't let you do that. It's a wetland. <coughs> that's what a wetland's supposed to do. It's supposed to sit there full of water. Um, the best thing that we can try to do, um, we're not going to violate the law and go into the wetlands anyway. We're not going to do that. Um, is to not send any water there that we don't absolutely have to. So we took this water from phase three, which we're not talking about tonight. Anyway, this is just in broad overview, and sending it the other direction because we can. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a proactive measure to get as much water away from there as possible. And that's in accordance with all the regulations and everything else. Texas Road and that, the entire wetland complex on the county property, I mean, it, it's a problem. I mean, we're trying, we're trying to do what we can up there. This should help somewhat. Um, we're also going to try to do something else <coughs> with some of the water to get it away. <coughs> but that's another, that's another application. Um, so we're just trying to be proactive. Thanks. Thank you. Scott, there was a final review letter, I believe. Yes, we have a letter from uh, the fire marshal, Mr. Hart, dated April 10, 2018. Uh, and he uh, basically indicates just uh, some minor concerns relative to some fire hydrant locations. And uh, we, he does acknowledge that we did have a meeting with him in early March, and we did address uh, the majority of his concerns. If there are any other ones, we'll, of course, work with, work with him. Thank you. And nothing further, Mr. Turner. Any okay, do you have any questions or comments for you? No, I think the applicants uh, agreed to, to address all our comments. Most of our, the comments in our, in our review letter are, are, are technical in nature. There's a lot of detailed stuff. Uh, we do have some circulation comments, which uh, I did have a chance to speak to Mr. Turner before the meeting, and they've agreed to, to satisfy our concerns. So I, I have no further uh, questions for okay. Mr. Turner. Any, Mr. Rumsey, did you have anything? Uh, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Um, also, um, uh, Mr. Turner said that they're going to address uh, some of my comments about um, cleaning up the plans and adding some information about the phasing, which um, Mr. Eif was very nice to hand out, as well as moving some um, parking spaces a little farther away from the intersection to improve safety. So I'm, I'm satisfied that they're going to be able to uh, meet uh, my, my uh, recommendations. Okay. Mr. Hart? No, no, fine. Yeah, okay. To conclusions with every problem we found. So. Okay, and on the board have any questions, comment? Yes, Mr. Bixby. Yes, thank you. Um, I 
that's my ward. I'm a Ward 5 councilman, by the way. And um, the folks down there on uh, Texas Road are saying that their wells are going dry since you guys have been building. <clears throat> Do you get any uh, complaints? I, I, I'm, I'm looking at Mr. Reif and I'm, I'm seeing him shaking his head, no. Yes. Uh, two things. Mr. Eif mentioned the Mount Laura building. Could you just give me a little more information about that? I know it's in phase three now. <clears throat> the Mount Laura building is the, the affordable building. It's 24 units in one. General rental plan requires us to build 75 uh, affordable units in addition to the housing trust fund. Um, we have built two 24 unit buildings in phase one. Those are up and operating and occupied. Um, there's one 24 unit building, which would bring us to 72. That goes in phase three. And the three additional units that I said go in building one and 5.1. That gets okay, those so you have a whole building that's not that affordable. The way ahead of schedule as far as um, how you have to phase <coughs> them in. That's absurd. Um, but if the question has to do with architecturally the building itself, uh, the architect can answer that. Unless there's something else. It, it, no, I was just wondering, are they supposed to be mixed in with the whole neighborhood or are they separated? Mm -hmm. That was oh, my concern. They're, okay. They're yes, supposed yeah. to be integrated into the isolation. You can't get a wife and you can't stick section and I'll go to the board that's up there. So we have we have three 24 unit buildings and that's where they are. Um, this is the one in phase three and I know building 17 it's either this this one this one and this one. And I know you can't put that on the record as this one and this one there's one <laughs> on Woodhaven Boulevard and Farrell and there's one on, I believe, Bell Avenue, um, on Bell Avenue. They are, they are, although the units themselves are in the building, the buildings are in the midst of all the other buildings. Um, so you're pointing to which phase now? I'm pointing, I'm pointing to the two buildings are in phase one. Phase one. And then the third building will be in phase three. And it is right next to the townhouses, and it's right next to the affordable building, and they can hop on their bicycles and go over to the rec center. So <coughs> we have not stuck it all someplace. Th this is one big complex. Are there any in phase four? Uh, no. Oh, th yeah, there'll be three units. Not in a 24-unit a building. building. Uh, the 75 is three 24-unit buildings, 72 plus three. Three are three lucky people get to go in a bigger apartment. Is that done by lottery? I mean, how, how do they? There is a there is a administrative mechanism that will fell an ox. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that works. We have a special consultant who works with the townships expert <coughs> that picks and chooses the folks. Um, we do not we do not pick them ourselves. There is some kind of a, of a randomness to it. I thought but you were lucky, so I was just I, no, what, what luck, by the luck I meant that of the 75, 72 get yeah. uh, regular apartments and three get big ones. Yeah. Um, somebody gets to sit in the middle of the room and they do. These three lucky ones do. But it's, it's, done, it's done by some, some process that administratively is over my head. Yeah, I would just like to, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, you can No, go. you go ahead. Okay. Uh, the next thing, uh, you mentioned that you're going to divert additional water to Barclay Brook. Um, when we have heavy rains like we did about a week and a half, two weeks ago, Englishtown Road floods at Barclay Brook. Are there going to be any improvements to the roadway? The, the, what, what that means is we're going to di divert it 
not not directly without without slowing it down. It goes to a, a detention basin first. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I didn't mean to say that it just goes out to it, it goes that that's the ultimate drainage way. It goes out to English Town Road instead of through Texas Road uh, and the Erisic Brook system. This will go out to the Barkley Brook system, but it hits a detention basin first. It's held back until all the peaks go by. We are not allowed to raise the water level um, on, uh, on adjacent properties. You can't, that's DEP's regulations. That's, that's what the, the basins are. And in fact, the basin and the regulations make you, <coughs> whatever the existing drainage is, you have to reduce that. So that's to get a, uh, a Flood Hazard Area Control Act permit. You have to do that. So the, the flows going out that way are gonna be reduced anyway. So it's not gonna exacerbate anything on English Town Road. So this could potentially reduce the flooding at Barclay Brook in English Town? Probably not going to reduce it because it's a massive drainage area that goes to that. You'd, you'd probably never notice anything, but it's not going to make it any worse. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to add that I'm really disappointed that the housing is not dispersed. The affordable housing, my understanding is that it was supposed to be dispersed throughout the development, not put in one building in each section. It's, it is it is dispersed. They, well, the affordable units are in the neighborhood with everybody else. The buildings look exactly the same on the outside as everybody else. So there's, there, is nothing, there is nothing isolationist about no, this. I, not, I know it's not isolation, but you've got all the units in one building. We, no, we do not. We have all the units in five different buildings. Oh, I I don't mean your total obligation, but you just said one building has 24 units of affordable housing. Right. It's all affordable housing, right? One building, and the building directly across the parking lot from it has got market housing. And the building across the, the lot, they, those, are, those are larger units for the market people. The, the affordable units are not small. The affordable units are plenty big. What? They are plenty big, the affordable units. So is the building any different? It's a the 24 outside of the it's building? It's a 24 unit building.